Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, August 27th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Apple today released an update for iOS, macOS Mojave, as well as for tvOS. And while this looks initially like the typical Apple patches, everything sort of release, this is a little bit different. First of all, no update, at least nothing from the security side for watch OS. The other sort of interesting part is it's only one vulnerability that's being fixed across these three operating systems. This vulnerability is is notably an issue that was reintroduced in 12.4, iOS 12.4. I mentioned this in this podcast in 12.3 Apple patched a vulnerability that led to a jailbreak in iOS in 12.4. They reintroduced this vulnerability and of course the jailbreak community jumped on this and released a jailbreak for iOS 12.4. This vulnerability is now being patched again in iOS 12.4.1. Due to similarities in the different kernels, this also affects macOS and tvOS. That's why we do have patches for these other operating systems as well. But again, only one vulnerability is being patched and this is CVE 2019-8605. Now you may think, hey, for macOS, uh, jailbreaking isn't really an issue, but what this comes down to is that this really approach escalation vulnerability. And in order to do a jailbreak on iOS, you need to execute arbitrary code with system privileges. And this is what this vulnerability allows across all these operating systems. And back in April, Pulse Secure released a patch for the Pulse Connect Secure VPN server. The patch fixed uh, arbitrary file read vulnerability that can be used to read, well, arbitrary files from the VPN server, including keys and other secrets. Bad Packets is now reporting that they're observing an increase in scans for these vulnerabilities, in particular from one host in Spain. In addition to leaking secrets, well, once the attacker has the secrets, uh, this particular issue can be escalated to a remote command injection. So if you are using this particular VPN server, please make sure that you update as soon as possible if you haven't done so already. Again, a patch was released back in April. It looks like sometimes bad guys need vacation too. As of June, the Emotet botnet had sort of pretty much disappeared and its command and control infrastructure was not really responding to any more requests. So some researchers already thought, well, uh, maybe the Emotet crew retired, but looks like they're back from vacation and a number of different researchers are reporting that Emotet is back. Cofence, I think, was the first uh, one to notice this on Twitter, but uh, yes, there were a number of other sources that uh, so spoke up to say that yes, uh, they're seeing it again. What's sort of special with Emotet is that it's a fairly flexible kind of botnet in that it does deliver a number of different uh, payloads, whether that's banking trojans or ransomware. So we'll see where it takes us next. At this point, they don't appear to be using any new malware. They're really just sort of reactivating the botnet, probably just to see what's left of it, what hosts are still infected, and then to rebuild it from there. Well, and that's it for today. And by the way, I'll be in Brussels in Belgium next week. So maybe I'll see some of you there also end of September in London again. If you're interested in attending one of my classes here in the US, the next opportunity will be October 9th in Chicago as part of the SEAM Summit that we are running in Chicago that week. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.